how do you affirm evolution if you don't see transitory fossils? Uh, and, and like I believed that argument for a long time. I just found that it wasn't nearly as strong as I, th I thought. And in fact, I started to actually go look at it for myself and start to see lots of transitory fossils. Um, part of it comes down to an artifact of language. Because if we're gonna see two different types of animals, we're gonna call them different things. And there's no like, way to label something 50-50 between two different things. You use one label for it and another label for it. And so just when you look at the taxonomy of animals, there's gonna be a discreteness to it. However, when you start looking into the details, you find that that's actually not a very good model for how biology works, that there's actually a lot more blurriness in the data. And, uh, and with that, it just, you know, a lot of the things that look like they're no transitory fossils, there's actually, there's actually examples that, you know, they really do look like transitory fossils. And it's not nearly as discreet as I'd been led to believe. And I'll tell you, I was, um, I was surprised by that. Um, but I can see why you may not believe me, because it takes a lot of time to get into that and find. I mean, probably the best example to see that is when you look at whale evolution. You can see uh, real clear evidence of transitory fossils. And also the other place where it's really clear is in human evolution. Because it was very recent, we have really good examples of transitory fossils. Now, that being said, I don't actually think that's the strongest evidence. I think the strongest evidence comes from where I ended up spending a lot of my time studying. Because there's a mathematical approach to getting at this, which is looking at genetics. I think when the human genome was sequenced when I graduated undergrad in 2000, <laughs> and then the chimpanzee genome was sequenced in 2005, when I was in graduate school, I think, I think that really um, was data that I didn't, I mean, I'm, I'm not really a paleontologist, well, I'm not a paleontologist. <laughs> I'm not, I don't pretend to be in the same way I don't pretend to be an astrophysicist. But I am a computational biologist. I am trained to study biological information and to assess that. And when I looked at that closely, one thing I can say, maybe evolution isn't true and, and God just created everything de novo, but he did it in a way that looks like evolution. It at least looks that way, and at the very least, and I remember distinctly coming to this conclusion in 2005 when I was actually using a computer program to look at the chimpanzee genome when it first came out. At the very least, God isn't cons as concerned about disproving evolution as I am. 